Um, I'd like to start off by uh, saying that um, um, I thought that was an extremely well-coached football team that we played today against. Um, uh, Anthony Anthony Beck does a heck of a job. Um, it was well fought. I mean, obviously, very both teams were back and forth. A lot of adversity for both teams during the game. Um, and uh, obviously, we're happy to come out on top. Uh, Jake Bates' kick was, I guess, both kicks were... We're, I mean, I don't know what you call it. It was just, it was unbelievable, actually. Um, but really proud of the team and uh, the way they played. They continued to play hard the whole game. Um, and that was, that's also a credit to the other team. Our opponents did the same thing. And that's why it came down to the very end of the, of the ball game. And uh, so anyhow, really proud of the team, the way they played. Um, Want to just, you know, say about my opponent that they were, that they were very good. They're going to win a lot of games, um, and we feel fortunate to come out with a win. We'll open it up to questions. Start over here in the, the gray. Over there. Back. Okay. Hi, Coach. Yeah. Um, Mike Mueller, BCP Plus. Back at Mike Mueller, oh, BCP okay, Plus. No, sorry, Mike. it's quite all right. I'll introduce myself to you as many reminds times. me of Ted Lasso. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, back at the uh, town hall meeting in February, yes, you had sir. mentioned that one of the areas that you wanted to see your team improve from last year to this year was in the secondary. Uh, going against a very good pass offense, how do you feel that your secondary uh, did both in the first half and then in the second half? I think they did a good job. Uh, as, as you all know, that game came down to about the fourth quarter, and that's when the offense has started to move the ball a little better. Um, uh, they have some very big, talented receivers. Um, it is a very uh, explosive offense. I was very pleased with with um, um, what we got done for most of the game. At the end there, I think we still could have done a better job. Uh, but nonetheless, we're playing a good team. So, and it, with good players, as you pointed out, and they're going to make plays. Um, I was I felt fortunate that it was just at the end of the game they they were making the plays and not throughout the entire game. And that's a credit also to our defensive backs. I thought. They they did a really good job as well. Um, I didn't mention, but I do want to mention, I thought our coaching staff did a great job of preparing the guys. I thought both Marcel, our offensive coordinator, and Colin Bauer, our defensive coordinator, uh, and by the way, I'm not calling it this year, that uh, Colin Bauer is calling our defenses, so um, that was never announced, but I just want to let you know, and I thought both those guys did a great job in the ball game of calling a very good game. So. Go to Jared next. Coach, can you talk about uh, EJ's day at quarterback? It seemed like he kind of started off a little slow, but then he started to find his rhythm, especially um, using his legs. Can you just talk about uh, what you saw from him out there? Yeah, I thought early in the game, it was just my feeling. I just felt like he was trying to push too hard to make a play. Um, uh, he, there was even a long one that he threw that he really should have just taken the shallow cross that was open. And, and so I just thought he was trying too hard, like I said, early in the game. Then he settled down and... Uh, and did what he always does. He finds a way to win the football game, you know, and uh, um, I believe he's just going to get better and better with the players that he plays with around him. Um, and so I'm excited about that. But but uh, EJ is a winner. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, he had two touchdowns today, obviously by running, but nonetheless, uh, he finds a way to, to, to win the game. And, uh, and that's kind of the objective. Go to the back of the room. Yeah, thank you, Coach. Pick up on a question asked earlier. They say that you learn more about your team from game one to game two. What is that big takeaway that uh, you're going to bring out to practice to let the guys know they're on to something and how you're going to be able to get them to that next level? Well, what I would take out of this game primarily was the adversity that we faced. Both teams faced it, but equally so. That's why it came down to the last, you know, nearly last, second to last play of the game. Um, and so that adversity would be the thing that, that I believe we're going to face um, you know, anytime we play a good team, I hope we are, you know, back and forth. I mean, we played Birmingham coming up last year, last two years, they've won the championship. And so we've got quite a challenge this week um, ahead of us. And so building between this week and next week, uh, you know, obviously everybody just wants to improve and get better individually. But collectively, I think this is something we can build on because it builds trust and faith in what you're doing. And that's always really important. You know, that's the tough thing when you lose a game like this. Sometimes there's, you know, you get a little cre creeps in a little bit about, well, are we doing everything we need to do to get a win and those kinds of things. But uh, like I've already mentioned, the team we face is a very good team. They'll win a lot of games. Yeah, time for a few more questions. 
Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Bauer because I was going to ask about that. Um, but your defense in general just played outstanding today. Uh, one of the guys I wanted to highlight was Daniel Wise, who was an offseason addition, eight tackles, a uh, couple sacks, and then a tackle for loss. What can you say about his effort and just the defensive line up front just generating so much pressure across the board? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got tired at the end, though. That was pretty evident, too. I thought it was, it was going good for a while, and then we were just gassed. Um, but uh, the, the defensive line for us has been a strength for two years now, and knock on wood, hopefully that continues and they stay healthy. It's a good group. We were fortunate to get Daniel Wise. Uh, we have, you know, um, we added some guys in the offseason to that position, and I thought we were pretty good last year. But as you know, uh, Levi went on to the NFL, and he's still there now. So we lost a guy or two to that. And then we had to let a couple guys go a week or two ago that were with, with us last year. Milan was one. Uh, Vantrell was one. Um, there might have been a third one. But anyhow, guys that performed for us last year and did a really good job. And these guys we brought in, we just felt were better than, than, than those guys at this point. So we went with those guys. And Daniel... Um, Daniel's a very good player. I'll just say that about him. He really is. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised he's playing for us in this league, to be honest with you, because he's that good. I know he has a brother that plays for New England, uh, but Daniel's a very good player. He really is. And I think he'll, if, as long as he stays healthy, he'll continue to, to shine. He's, he's pretty good, pretty special. Back to Jared, and then we'll end right here. Did you guys ever work on 64-yard kicks in training camp? And what was kind of going through your head during that whole sequence until uh, it went through the uprights? Well, uh, do, you, do we work on um, – <laughs> the other day in practice, um, you know, it was this past week, uh, he did kick – he just lined up and kicked just like you saw him today. They looked exactly like that. They could have gone for 70, I guess, if you wanted them, but he kicked just like that in practice. Um, and it got my attention because up to that point, we were kind of keeping things in the 40s and 50s and all that good stuff. Well, he just lined up with the holder, and, and he was – there wasn't a line at the time. He was just – I don't know, he just – showing off maybe I guess but I sat there and watched him and he kicked that thing 65 yards in practice and he did it a couple times just like you saw it went right through the middle um geez I mean I hope that can that if that continues that'll be great for us um but Jake has has been quiet all along just coming to practice doing his thing you know kicking and um and he's done a great job and he doesn't have a tremendous amount of history to even speak about as far as kicking goes so he's a it's an interesting thing. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to read whatever story you guys can put out there on him because it'll help me know a little bit more about Jake, too. But he kicked it today. <clears throat> Did a great job. Cool. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate we'll it. Have, uh, Jake Bates and EJ Perry Thanks, in Mark. next. Uh, my name is Jared Ramsey, Detroit Free Press. Jake, can you just walk me through that final sequence? Um, first, uh, getting your name called for the final kick, making the first one, getting iced, and then still nailing the second one. Yeah, no, um, before they kicked off, went up to EJ. I don't know if he realized it, but he was pretty locked in. I told him, get me, get it to the 45, and, and, um, and I'll get it there. Um, and, you know, we were, I guess, a yard off that. But, no, I mean, the first one hit a good ball. Um, I mean, that's why you practice so hard is so that every kick can be the same. It, um, so, I mean, that comes from just years and years of repetition hitting the same ball, and that's what I try to do with every ball needs to be the same they never change anything and so I mean that's kind of kind of that so I don't know I just took my steps again and hit, hit the same ball uh, James Larson pro football newsroom uh, EJ the offense second half really came alive you had a couple of rushing touchdowns there what were some of the adjustments you guys made it's just kind of getting your chemistry to, to make those scores and just make those big time plays the second half um yeah just before that uh <laughs> I said it on the field but he came up to me and said, the 45, and I went over to the old line and I said, I started doing the math in my head and I said, we gotta get to the 35. Uh, I did not believe that. <laughs> and uh, it was, I got to the, like you said, one yard short. I was like, ah, well, it's gonna have to do. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to have uh, Jake on our team. Uh, yeah, I mean, the first half, um, obviously two costly mistakes. I try to force two balls and, and it kind of put us in a hole, both drives. We were probably gonna get points. Um, and you know, but you got to set it up for TV and let Jake hit the kick, right? So um, no, uh, yeah, it was it was great locker room. You know, anytime you get back in the locker room, first game of the season, you know, the, it was a three nothing game at half. No one had seen anyone's defense. Uh, we're all trying to put our stuff together, and I probably should have uh, been a little bit more uh, patient, uh, having never seen their defense, never seen anything. And uh, you know, we come out in the second half, kind of made the adjustments. Coach Marcel is amazing. Um, and honestly, he did a great job in the first half. It was just 
like I said, those two execution errors. And uh, if we don't do that, we probably are up 10, 10 nothing or 10, three at half, probably 10, nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a great way to respond. I mean, you saw Wes, uh, everyone, the O line uh, responded, the West responded, Marcus made great catches, Cole making great plays, uh, Trey, I mean, across the board, Devin Ross, everyone. So uh, it was fun to see and it's, it's fun to be a part of this team. Arlington Lane, Pro Football Alliance, EJ, talk about uh, having Wes Hills also in the backfield, him coming over from a, a team like the New Orleans Breakers that unfortunately is no longer with uh, uh, the UFL at this point, but you got a established running back. Talk a little bit about having him in the backfield for you. Yeah, heck yeah. I mean, that was that's what everyone's been waiting to see this weekend for the last, you know, waiting for the merger when it got announced in the last six months of it all coming together was to see, you know, what this new league was going to look like. And, and it's you know, for us players, like everything is deeper. Everything is, um, you know, teams are on, on both sides of the ball on, on both teams. So, uh, you know, he's a great example of that. Uh, a tremendous player who was a tremendous player in the previous league and his team gets cut. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's awesome to have guys like that. And it, it's around the ball everywhere. Uh, I think we only have, we have less than half of the guys that we had last year. So, um, you know, it, to, to get, better all across the league, it's going to be a fun year. Hi, David McDonald, The Pit Media. EJ, it's no secret that the uh, first half was a little tough. Um, to start the second, you had a pass to Marcus Sims that was just on the dot. Does something click in your mind mentally when you see those opportunities open up? Yeah, yeah it was, um, you know, we had scouted it all year and, um, or all whatever last camp uh you know for for them to come out and look a certain way and we're kind of guessing and you know like i said i, I was for, forced two balls in there against looks that i was surprised about and i should have just checked the ball down or, or thrown it away and to come out in the second half and um you know now we knew what they were seeing and i knew marcus we had been working that inside release go he's he's the fastest guy on the field no matter what field you get on so uh, I knew all I had to do was hold the safety and, and put it in play for him, and he made a tremendous catch. And and uh, yeah, I think that that got us started in the second half. Uh, Jared Ramsey with the free press again. This question for either of you: Can you just talk about what it was like playing in front of the Detroit crowd and um, kind of what you heard and um, saw from fans? Yeah, good, Jake. Yeah, no, they were they were loud. They got they got really loud. Um, it was really cool to be in this stadium. It's a beautiful stadium, and I thought you know the fan turnout was great. They were great. They were they were active the whole the whole game and got loud when they needed to get loud. And um, you know I thought they were great. Gave us a, a big advantage. I'm sure sure especially late with that behind you. You know um, that helps uh, fuel a, a last you know a game winning drive. And you know that's that's no secret. But it's been it was awesome to have that 12th man here with us. Yeah, I got to live in Michigan for you know a month, a little more than a month uh, last year, and so did all the la other guys and. I uh, got to experience Michigan. It was the summer, so it was it was awesome. And uh, you know, they come out and support us, and we're we're extremely happy about that. It's it's an unbelievable venue. I mean, Ford Field. I drive a Ford Escape, so you know, to to be able to play here is is awesome. And uh, you know, it's they, they come out and and support us, and and it was fun. You know, being around last year, people seeing us and saying, oh hey, you know, do you play whatever? And and so people like it, and it it's been awesome in Michigan. Question for either of you: With the off season, there was so much uncertainty. Is there a sense of relief now, like you can exhale now that the first game is completed? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, definitely. Uh, especially, I'm. I mean, I didn't know you before this, but like, I didn't know what I was gonna. I didn't know if I was gonna be just working my job selling brick or if I was gonna be able to play football. So, um, yeah, it feels good to. I feel like I got that sense of relief once we got into training camp and it was like, okay, this is happening. I'm here, you know, I'm with the team. And um, no, yeah, definitely to get the, get the first game out of the way and, and be a W, Wait, you know, it, it feels good. I said to him after, after the game, I said, were you nervous? He goes, nervous? You said, you made me kick a 66 yarder. It's like, it, I couldn't, I didn't, you know, it was just go out there and try my best. I mean, it was like, uh, you know, no lose situation. So uh, for him, you know, that was his first, First kick, yeah. Ever and you know, so it was in a in a game other than kickoffs and other stuff that you've done. Um, so uh, we're very happy to have Jake and uh, yeah. I think for me, everyone's settling in. So uh, 
I think you saw that throughout the game. And I think, uh, I think you know, next week, and we're going to try to build. I mean, that's how football goes. You, you get better each week. Okay, we'll have time for two more. We'll go to the back and then come right up here to the front second. Can I ask one? one more, yeah, one more follow-up. When you kick from that far, for you, do you change the point of contact on the ball or where you line up at all? No. Um, I mean, with the whole Justin Tucker thing a couple years ago where he did the little extra step, uh, he was from 66, I think. And, I mean, I, I trust my leg from, from there where, you know, I would rather miss it my way than miss it away trying to do something different. So we were what, 63, 62, something like that. Where? Yours today? Four. 64. Yeah. Oh, and so I mean, <laughs> sorry, jeez. I've seen. I've, sorry about that. <laughs> I, I've seen myself do it before, so I had confidence, and I didn't think I needed to just change anything. And you know, I got a perfect snap, perfect hold, and hit the ball. Yeah. Th uh, this question's for Jake. You, it's it's automatic for a game-winning kick that the other coach is going to freeze you or for a big one. You just you kind of build that into your thought process and go, they're going to freeze me, and they can't do anything after that. Is there any of those thoughts that go through your head? <laughs> I, I didn't honestly, I didn't even think about them even having a timeout. That didn't even like register in my head until I heard the whistle blow. But I was already in the flow of it. So, I mean, I think that's a good thing that I didn't like. I didn't even crossed my mind that they could ice me. I forgot that. Honestly, in that moment, I forgot icing existed. So <laughs> we had. I just tried to hit the ball about 30 minutes earlier than that too, just so you guys <laughs> know how locked into his kick he was. Yeah. So it sounds like you're the kicker that brings the ice water. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I don't know about that, but uh, that was fun. Last question right here. Jason Spurgeon, X Fan Show and Fuel Sports Network. Jake, how do you feel now? I mean, you you tied the record in spring football with a 64 yarder and now you were plastered all over tv doing it so i mean what's going through your head and ej i mean are you happy now that you can make are you going to try to go 70 to see if you can do a 70 so yeah how do you guys feel about all that i mean it doesn't change too much i'm you know it's, I, don't, I don't know it doesn't change too much i don't think i mean i'm thankful that this organization gave me a chance and took a shot in the dark on somebody that, you know, with my playing history, a lot of teams didn't want to. And so I think a lot of this season is just, I just want to, you know, show them that I'm thankful for them, that they gave me this opportunity to chase a dream and um, whatever I can do to, to, you know, show them that I'm thankful. That's what I'm going to try to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to get them maybe 55 next time. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe shorter. I, I can't, I don't know if we can, he made it twice, so maybe, but I don't think you want to live and die on 64 yarders. Yeah. Uh, so I know he's over here, you know, upset at that question. He want he doesn't want it that far either. So uh, maybe we'll try next next week to not need a, a game winning field. Maybe we'll try to try to score some more points. So there you go. thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.